What these guys represent are two completely different sides of Acadian music. Jerry's from New Brunswick, and I think when you hear their playing, the accent in their music is what's going to show you the difference. Um, Joe is from Chetty Camp on the west coast of uh, Cape Breton Island in the north, northern part of Nova Scotia. Uh, most people think of Cape Breton as a place full of Scottish music, which is true. But up on that west coast, from what uh, St. Joseph Des Moines, uh, Marguerite, right up through uh, Shetty Camp is a thick French community. And uh, the music there is Scottish music with a French kit. All right? Play with your heart. All right. You can say in three words what takes me an hour. Together, if you want to start to get warmed up, and then I'll ask them each to play it so you can hear the difference. You want to back us up on Heather on the Hill? snap, if you will, in the bow. Jerry, I think you use more more finger ornaments in that, that style of stuff. Yeah, the, uh, the bow uh, has a lot to do with it. The bow is the big difference. Sure. Yeah. Um, now, you started playing when you were... I was eight years old. Eight? Yeah, I've been playing for uh, 54 years. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got that many fingers. Um, Tell them a little bit about the dances at the French Club, how that works. Well, we have uh, 
two sets every Saturday, and uh, it's called Asses. In New Brunswick, we used to uh, play all night without a call. And, uh, and uh, as we, uh, when I first came over here, and then I, was, I wasn't quite used to these callers, and uh, it didn't take long because I, I used to play there every Saturday. And when Joe came along, we, uh, we started we, we alternating uh, Joe and I. So, uh, and now you have, what, three? Three, uh, Lugier three Lafort. players now, Luge, Joe, and myself. Yeah, yeah Luge, Lafort, uh, Joe, and, and Jerry rotate every uh, other Saturday or every third Saturday. The Red so. Sox should have a rotation like that. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> um, the music that Jerry plays is what a lot of people refer to as down east fiddling. Right, that was, uh, that's the term that was used on your record. Down east, yeah. It was mostly down east uh, <clears throat> style. And, and it really goes back to people like Don Messer, who was sort of the Lawrence Welk of Canada, if any of you don't know who he was. A great fiddler. And I thought we'd uh, play those two tunes, the, the Surrey's Lighthouse and uh, the Mouth of Tobique, okay. uh, as an example of uh, a couple of tunes. These were on early 78s that Don Messer did, and they're very typical. They're some of the first tunes I learned from, uh, from Jerry. Why don't we trade a place here? I'll play with him a little bit in this. And, you know those tunes, right? Northeastern New Brunswick? Yes. In other words, it's a little, little north of where you come from. Way up north. Way almost up. almost the main, uh, main border. Way up uh, above oh, North Star. Oh, northwest. Yeah. Oh, northwest. One thing you, you will find interesting is the whole, this whole business of down east. Uh, and I'm sure some of you know this, but for those of you who might not, I'll, I'll repeat this. Down east refers to the fact that sailing ships would come from Boston, they would go down east to the Maritimes, to Nova Scotia. So even today, these guys talk about going down to Cape Breton, going down, down home, and they come up to Boston. So you might be a little confused if you hear them talking about, well, I came down, I came up here. You might be thinking of Louisiana coming up to Boston, but they're coming up from down east. You got that? <laughs> um, the other person I want you to know uh, about is, is Marsha Palmatier, who just arrived. And she agreed to help us out to whatever extent uh, with this. Marsha has had Down East Cayley, which is a radio program, and this is your 23rd year? Just started the 23rd year. The show started every the first, Thursday night. First Thursday um, in February, 1972. And you can get it in most parts of Boston, but if you happen to live where I live in the Antenna Farm, you have to do crazy things. And her, my favorite story is about the old uh, uh, Nova Scotia family that when, when the wife comes home, the, the husband is sitting, what, he's got his hands spread out on the wall and holding onto the radio. Brayton McDonald, he was, he was standing, his wife Bernadette is from PEI, Brayton McDonald yeah. is from Jersey, 
came, came home, Bernadette came home, and here's Creighton like this. And she said, what in the name of God are you doing? And he said, if I stand like this, I can get the program to come in. Creighton, <laughs> <laughs> you can't stand like that for two hours. But that's Sorry, that's my I know, I know people who go out and sit in their car and drive down to the parking lot the next door where they can pick it up. Uh, it's it's the only the only format in this area for this kind of music, and it's every Thursday night. Uh, if Actually, been... we have coverage in southern New Hampshire, and we have regular listeners down almost to the Cape. That goes and, up 90. And out, out and out as far as as Worcester, but then there are as often with FM there are the bad spots like where you live. Um, and Dave, her husband, is upstairs doing the folk show on WMB. So. They've been a stalwarts of this music and supporters of it for many years. Um, but these are the guys that play it. Um, the other one I wanted you to play for them um, were some of the, the tunes, like the old, the old tunes that you learned from uh, from the, the old players like when you were kids. Uh, Eddie Arsenal? Yeah, yeah. Those. yeah I learned one from Eddie, uh, it's called a Dragger's Reel. Yeah, yeah, play that. That's a beauty. The other one I want you to play is a Bray Reel. two months and either go sit in Joe's kitchen or Jerry's kitchen or there's another fellow that couldn't be here today uh, Edmund Boudreaux plays guitar and mandolin with Joe uh, and go over to his house and they, they keep pulling out these tunes that uh, never heard the other one that I just heard was the Bray the Bray reel that's a beauty you play that tune now why don't you guys play it I, I'm gonna just sit and listen because it, it's a beautiful tune and this is also from Eddie Arsenal right? yeah. Irish music, some of the French influences that you might have might have seeped in from Quebec, but mostly it's I think to the east. There is a mixture of uh, Quebec and the east, but uh, there's a quite a difference in yeah. the style yeah. itself. The Celeste makes a difference in the style. I don't play that. I play Scottish. Scottish I was going to say maybe we should. And Irish. Irish. Yeah. Now Joe grew up in in Chetty Camp. Uh, I think you were saying some of your first experiences was standing outside the hall because they wouldn't you're too little to get in yeah, and listening to Winston Fitzgerald and all the great ones. Angus, yeah. Um, 
Give us a, give us a couple of tunes. You want to play some jigs? Yeah, I was just going to say we haven't had any jigs. I got there to tell you that you were supposed to finish at 10.15, yep. not 10.20, to yep. clear out. But since we're not in the ballroom, tell them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Um, occasionally, uh, I get a chance to go over and play at one of the dances with Joe. And uh, I remember the first time I heard these guys play at the French Club, I was amazed that anyone could make their bow work like that. And uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's just a, a real pleasure to be able to present uh, these guys to you, and uh, hopefully you'll have the same feeling when you you hear them. This uh, it's a real, like you say, it's, I think you put it just perfectly. It's from the heart. Yeah. Let's let's uh, let's do the uh, the bungalow. Yeah. What is it? It's an A. Another two. Another two. Another two. Yeah. And then A to C, and then the second two goes to what? Uh, a minor. Do you want to go to what do you want to finish with it? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, I might ask if anyone has any questions they'd like to ask these guys about either the music, the style, or the, the French community in this area. Or how to get hold of them to book them for major concerts. <laughs> you know, there is a, yeah. Do you find that you're being limited? Do you find that you're being limited because you're now being referred to as a Acadia fiddle player, where it does allow you to go out and express yourself other ways musically, or do you like being locked in as a French Canadian fiddler? Well, I'm locked in because uh, that's the only thing I know what to do. I mean, I, I never did this for stuff for a living. It's just pure, pure enjoyment. Anybody wants to listen? Joe, Joe, Joe has been an uh, electrician all his life. Jerry's been a metal plater. And uh, I think the, the difference is, you, in the folk community, you get a lot of, uh, of people who become interested in the music, and they try different things. And uh, when you meet people like this, this is all they've ever done. Remember when I first, when we were talking about one other fellow from Cape Breton, Jerry Holland. Uh, he was at a festival, and we were doing a workshop like this, and someone said, now how would you play a shoddish? He said, what the hell is a shoddish? <laughs> you know, I mean, he had no idea, because they'd never played it in that, in that setting. So. Um, I think they occasionally do, they call it the barn dance, though. Yeah. If asked for a barn dance, we might have been able to Yeah. Play. That's why we can't, we don't make a living out of it, because you don't uh, have any money, but you learn from the time. Yeah. I said, I started about eight years old myself. I mean, I do 58 years. <laughs> but I mean, I haven't played every week or every day. I mean, just to pick up the fiddle. My father played and my brothers played. I was the youngest. So, just uh, and you have to realize that these are areas that they come from where, I mean, you can you can make a joke out of it and say there's a fiddler under every rock, but it's just about true. It's true. Because when I was brought up, there was no TV. That's why uh, the style varies between counties. Because when I was there was no TV. There was few radios. So for as far as you learn to play the style for as far as the horse and wagon would take you, mm. or your bicycle or something. So you, you played for your for your, uh, for your local, for your uh, neighborhood, you played for the parish hall, and then you hang it off. So, I mean, that's, that's something that's been ingrained in you. So. Although I will say that I, I've, I've taken some of these guys to play for country dances in the area, and uh, the dancers love it. The music works for just about any kind of way you want to move your feet. And for those of you who might come back this afternoon for more of this punishment uh, for the maritime session, uh, we, we have some step dancers coming. I don't know if we'll do it in here, but we might have to do it over on the tile or something. But, uh, um, that's, it's not uncommon to go to the French club or to the Canadian club for a Cayley. Um, and if you're playing, and if you're playing right, someone will just jump up from one of the tables and start stepping. It's not, it's not that organized that you have to, uh, have to ask permission. And they always, they have, uh, one of the things that I love about uh, the playing up uh, at, the, at the club or, or in Cape Breton is uh, if someone jumps on the floor and starts really doing it, someone in the crowd will yell out the name of the town and say they're from Judique or Mabu, they yell Mabu on the floor. <laughs> or Judique on the floor. And uh, it gets to be a pretty competitive uh, little business there. I've seen uh, a concert of this, uh, you know, big Scotch concert held in a in a hall, you know, with fixed seats, mm -hmm. and then you have to get up in the aisles. Yeah, uh, there's a, a a great place to go if you're traveling is um, to Chetty Camp. Doryman. Huh? The Doryman Tavern. The Doryman Tavern. That's right. A Saturday afternoon, yeah, right? Place is wild. Yeah. And it's and it's <laughs> it's full of full of fiddlers and dancers. But I remember going to a concert there. It was the I think it was a Thursday night concert in the summer, and they had it at the ice rink. Oh, yeah. And this place held probably I don't know a couple thousand people, and uh, they had the big high stage up about this high, with with two pianos, and then they had a little stage down front for anyone who wants to jump up and step. So they accommodate their dancers. Uh, so it's kind of hard to play for just sitting and. Uh, yeah. Um, incidentally, these guys play regularly. If you're looking for local flavor and a lot of smoke, you know, I mean, these are these are clubs, you know. Uh, Jerry's playing tomorrow night at the French Club in Waltham, right behind the the old Waltham Watch Factory, and uh, that starts what about nine? About eight. About eight. Okay, that yeah, was close. <laughs> uh, Joe is playing Sunday. 
over in Waltham, right by the river at the at the Luthiers workshop. 99 Moody Street. From the second. Um, it's a strictly a concert. It's three o'clock. Hour and a half. Three yeah. o'clock. Three o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you go over and, and visit Waltham. You were saying too the other night we were talking about Waltham as a center for French activity. And what it all you know I mean you have people from everywhere. Waltham is it is where ninety percent of the fiddlers live. Well, Waltham, Watertown. Watertown, Waltham. Yeah. Well, there's not that many fiddlers. Jerry and I have John Campbell. John Campbell. Uh, Joe Boudreau. Joe Boudreau. Joe <laughs> when he plays, um, but there's that's where all that activity comes from. When did you come down? Uh, 1955. 55. Been there, playing there ever since. I came in '61. '61. But when Joe came down, we uh, the Blue Jay, then we, we took turns. Mm -hmm. and we decided. Grand Swap was a beautiful hall, and it was built by the members. And within the ranks of the membership, they had all the building trades represented. They built themselves a beautiful hall. They couldn't have afforded otherwise. Yeah. You probably did some of the, little, some of the wiring there. We got just that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a very strong community, and, uh, and there's a lot of activity that goes on. If you're in this town Thursday night, you want to know what's going on, you listen to Marsh's program. And uh, then on... Uh, Saturday night, you can go to one of the two clubs. It's breakfast, the Canadian American Club, this, uh, this Sunday morning, uh -huh. 9.30 to 11.30. $4 dollars all you can eat. Mm -hmm. uh, on the third, I think it's the third, is it the third Wednesday of the month, the Gaelic Club yeah. meets? and uh, Except in July and August, when there's, you can't get up a square set hardly in right. Boston. At that time of year, everybody's down east. Yeah. Uh, also, now we found out that on Friday nights, at the Canadian American Club, they have a session. Uh, Irish sessions are very common, mm. but in this style of music, it's not so common. It's more kitchen gatherings and playing for dances, but they've decided to get together downstairs in the Canadian club. They have a bar, and they've kind of set it up like a pub with a little stage area and a piano, I guess. And every Friday night, they go, and uh, the first hour or so, whoever's there teaches a tune or teaches some step dancing, and then it's just open house for the rest of the evening. It's a good place to catch Luce Laporte. He's a yeah. wonderful fiddle player. Uh, he's, he's been a regular there. And the Canadian American Club is just like the guys were saying. It's all Waltham and Watertown. The French Club, the French American Victory Club, is its formal name, is in Waltham, and the Canadian American Club is in Watertown. And you tend to find uh, your uh, Canadian, your Canadians of French extraction primarily in, in Waltham, and the Scots more in Watertown. That's where John Campbell. Wouldn't you say John Campbell's never there. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying he lives in Watertown. He made yeah. it home, but. <laughs> but wouldn't you say that's correct? That's yeah. correct. Yeah, sure. I mean, there's certainly there's certainly Scots in Waltham and, and French in Watertown, but that's more. Or less Years ago, you would find that in this community, there was a place called Dudley Street down in Roxbury, <laughs> a Dudley and Warren Street, and within a two-block area, there were five dance halls, and they held up to a thousand people per hall. Wow. And on Thursday and Saturday nights, they were going gangbusters, every one of them. And at one, you'd have the Kerry crowd from Ireland, the other, you'd have the Connemara crowd from Ireland, another, you'd have the Inverness County Cape Bretoners, and the other one, you'd have the Sydney side Cape Bretoners. And they all had their bands and their musicians um, and going strong. And they said that, uh, I asked them, why Thursday night? And he said, well, that was Maid's Night Out. <laughs> and all the, all the Irish and the people who have come down from, from uh, Nova Scotia, the, the girls were doing domestic help. And the Thursday night was Maid's Night Out, and that was the hot night to go down there and to be around those dances. But you imagine five dance halls in two two blocks, with a, a close to a thousand people in each hall, with live music. Would the dances be called, or were they all? Some were called, some were not. When you go to to Cape Breton, a lot of the call of them are are not called, like no, at the Glencoe Mills. Snook uh, Village, they never have a caller. No. No. The other thing you'll find is that they'll do the same. The same basic square sets every every set. There are four or, or three, half a dozen, three or four uh, dance sets that everyone knows. And and if the collar fell over, you could, they could still do it all. I mean, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah. But uh, yeah, but they just call them on the floor, and it's very much part of that community. It's nothing that you have to go learn. You grow up knowing it. The figures are comparatively simple because the stepping is what's important. That's right.
Um, the other thing that you hear Joe play more than you hear Jerry are clogs, hornpipes, strass bays. Why don't you do a set with a few strass bays and, or, or whatever, a clog or whatever you're feeling. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> as ready as I'm going to be. Jerry loves to play the clogs, and, and uh, when I first met Jerry, he played a tape for me of an old fiddler who we thought was long gone named Tommy Doucette. And if any of you collect records, you've seen Rounder has a record out uh, of Tommy's, and I made a record of him later, but um, he played this tape, and it was incredible stuff. And this guy played clogs and hornpipes, and uh, we went to the French club one night, and there was Tommy sitting at the, at the bar. And Jerry said, you won't believe who's here. And we dragged him over to Jerry's house. And Tommy sat there and said, oh, no, God, I can't play nothing. I've never, oh, no. And he picked up the fiddle and started just knock us over. <laughs> so we've had this sort of off-on-again relationship with Tommy over the years. Uh, he was a real irascible type of character. If, if he didn't like the piano player, he'd just put down the fiddle and walk away. <laughs> just forget it. And he, never, he hardly ever would make a record because he, he said he couldn't find the right musicians. And... He was kind of right. It was hard to find anyone good enough for him. He was very good, but it was, he was good to a fault. So, but Jerry has learned a lot of those tunes and uh, that hornpipe and clog style. So Tommy was from mainland Nova Scotia. Yeah, he's from uh, Concession. Yeah, from yeah, Digby. 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 Yeah. yeah.
right? The Humphrey and Humphrey? When I first, I first saw Jerry play in Craftsbury Common, Vermont, uh, back in the early 70s, and uh, he was up at a fiddler's contest, and uh, they were sitting on the back of a, of a station wagon. They had a little cooler between them, and they were going strong. It was full. Huh? It was full. It was. It was empty fast. It wasn't full when you were through it. No. But I, I walked by, and I heard him playing this tune, and I never forgot it. Uh, it's called Riding the Hump. I don't know where it's from. They don't let you compete anymore, do they, Jerry? Haven't they retired you? I haven't competed in about 10 years. So. Well, I think I'm going to start again. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> but anyway, this tune I heard of, and I said, what do you call it? He said, riding the hump. And I oh. had no idea. I, I get that from Earl Mitten. Oh, yeah. I don't know where you get that. Okay. guys like Tommy Doucette and Earl Mitten was a great Canadian fiddler that uh, uh, put out a lot of recordings back in the 50s and whatnot. Um, some of the tunes that I prefer or that I love that Tommy Doucette taught me were some of the simpler dance tunes, two steps perhaps you'd call them. Um, and the, the one that everyone seems to ask for these days is called uh, the Maple Leaf Two Step. And it's, uh, it's just a good, a good solid dance tune. There's nothing fancy but I love it. Today. I'm sorry. I'm from I'm from New Hampshire, where you know it's the caller. He owns the dance hall in some cases. Yeah. He hires the band. 
and it's known as, as his dance, or you know, like uh, Ted Sinella runs a dance, he hires the musicians, and everybody calls it Ted's dance. Uh, John Campbell hires the hall, hires the pianist, besides which of the callers he will honor with his, with his, uh, and it's John's dance. That's right, the fiddler's dance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you, when you talk about the Glencoe Mills dance in, in Cape Breton, it's Buddy McMaster. And if it isn't Buddy, there's hell to pay. That's right. <laughs> Occasionally somebody else has to fill in for him, which is the most unenviable yes. position. People coming, coming from, you know, Vancouver, and they go to Glencoe Mills, it's not Buddy! Paul and Judy, yeah, okay. We were discussing the other day that, that in, in Nova Scotia, this is a man who needs only one name. You say That's Buddy, right. everybody knows him. Like Liberace. Yeah. <laughs> well, they had, we saw, there's a newspaper that was uh, uh, the, uh, from Cape Breton that uh, told about all the events that were going on in the summer, and there's a big ad that said, Glencoe Mills Dance, every Thursday, or this Thursday, Glencoe Mills, special dance. And then in Princeton he said, yes, Buddy will be there. <laughs> but this, this little hall, dance hall is, is a parish hall, and it's what, it's way up, way up the hills. Oh, and, it, it's in um, back dirt road. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I went Miles there with, with him one uh, summer, and we got there, and I said, are you sure this is the right place? There was two cars there, and the place was dead empty, and that was at 10 o'clock at night. The dance started at 11, and by 11, you couldn't pack another body in the place. And Buddy sat down behind the amplifier and the piano player and just started playing, and the place was just going up and down. And someone told me that they, uh, they did a, uh, a documentary about this, and they went, and they crawled under the hall in the middle of this, and they said they watched the beans just going <laughs> shots of it. But uh, this is out in the Those middle of nowhere, and it's a famous dance. If you ever get to Cape Breton, you want to go to Glencoe Mills and hear Buddy play. It's so on Thursday night. Um, night, 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 night. behind the bar. Yeah. No more mates now. It's all the surgeons I know they dare try to run anything else that night. I was night. thinking of that one, too. <laughs> yeah. get dragged along on the uh, on the ride it's a beautiful time um, play the uh, Pacific Slope the old way you play it. this is something that Jerry learned uh, it's written in books a lot different than this and if any how many of you are musicians you play uh, you may know the tune uh, but the way Jerry learned it was very different and I remember you telling me the story about going to visit this old guy in the hospital yeah this old guy used to play the fiddle left-handed and he used to play the Pacific Slopes and the way he plays it, I love the tune so much that I learned. I, I know it wasn't the way it was written, but I learned it the way he used to play it. You said he whistled it for you. Yeah, and then he, he, yeah. he played it. And he, yeah. uh, his name was Maxime LeBlanc. And there it goes on A.
No. no. <laughs> You mean about who he but is or his role? The Both. tradition of Both. Uh, using piano. Both. Yeah. 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 Tony Parks um, has called and run dances around New England for years, if you don't know him. And uh, he wrote a book on Downey's piano backup accompaniment. That's Peter. That was huh? Peter. That was Peter Barnes. Oh, I thought you did it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, you look alike. Well, anyway, yeah. <laughs> you know. um, but traditionally, uh, the piano is the backup instrument in most of this maritime music. I know. Joe plays a lot with uh, Edmund Boudreau plays guitar and mandolin, uh, but there's usually a, a piano not far, um, and usually the the fiddler likes to sit on the bass side of the piano, and it becomes a percussion instrument, a, a rhythm instrument, and in a lot of Cape Breton tradition, the piano player, maybe the second time through the tune, will play the melody on the right hand while they're banging out the rhythm with the left. Mm -hmm. But uh, and do you have any more to say about this? That's pretty much it. it, it it's, it's one one place where there is such a thing as folk piano. That, you know, every dance hall, every every church hall had its piano, and it, it's just kind of, kind of uh, from from the pianist's point of view. Of course, it's the core of the band. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's that's more true in New England. That the piano is the core of the dance band. In uh, in Cape Breton and New Brunswick, it's more that the fiddler is the star and, and a good a good piano player is trying to, kind of, it's like the, the fiddler is painting a picture and the, fiddler, uh, the piano player is trying to frame it to, to show it off to best advantage. And then whatever. Yeah, we'll do some uh, hornpipes, you know these, the G, um, the, the uh,
Wednesday night, I didn't know where we were going. We played for about 25 minutes. <laughs> but uh, that's often what happens. And in those sessions, uh, for dancing, um, Jerry might play one or two tunes throughout the whole set. Joe will play maybe 10 tunes once or twice through each. A question on, on sessions. You mentioned sessions a few minutes ago. Uh, a Scottish fiddling friend of mine, who is a great advocate of Cabretan fiddling, mentioned that on his first visit to Cabretan, the etiquette at a session was a bit different than what he knew at home. For example, um, the session he attended, the fiddlers would play, but they would be invited to play a set rather than someone spontaneously jumping in to, to do music. What is your impression of that, John? Uh, in uh, Cabretan? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, everybody knows the fiddler. If you go in, if you have a session, everybody knows everybody's going to play. So, say, I'll uh, play a while, and Frank will play it, then come on, John Archie, or whatever it is. Everybody gets a chance. You get invited to play. Yeah, but, but, you, you know, nobody nobody's in, nobody's ignoring. Huh? It's Somebody not like the typical Irish session. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Nobody's ignored. Yeah. And everyone gets a chance to play. In the Irish session, everyone plays at once. And uh, they both have demerits, um, but the uh, it's it's interesting when we all get together, and sometimes Lou Jay is along. Um, we all have a different style, so it's sometimes we each will play a while, and then we'll find something we can all play together. But uh, it's uh, it's often some promoter will try and put five or six fiddlers from one you know from one place together. And you're hearing five or six different versions of the same tunes. They might know all the same tunes, but they play them quite differently. Yeah. Um, before it gets too late, and before we play another tune or two, I wanted to mention that um, if you want to get in touch with these fellows or uh, want to know more about their music, they, they all they have good recordings out. Joe was honored a few years ago as a National Heritage Award winner. And, Masters the Violin Tour. But he has a, a new recording out on Rounder. Do you just happen to have one of those yes. with him? Yeah. Okay. Um, that you can, if, if you need to get one or you want to get a, a tape from him or a CD, he's got them. And Jerry, you've got yours with you? Yes. Um, he's got a, a new recording out. And I've got one out, um, which is called Yankee Dreams. And, uh, Frank? Also, just like to mention, if people want to know or want to hear more of the French Canadian vocal tradition, uh, as well as some fiddling. Um, there's some brochures up here for a recording uh, by myself, Donna Hébert, and José Vachon. Uh, the band is called Chanterelle, and it's music from Quebec and Louisiana. Um, they won't let me sing, so I don't know about you, but uh, that's why we play the fiddle. <laughs> you sing? They want to go yeah. home. But it's easy. <laughs> Although you sang a song the other day, the other night, that the first real young horn. What was that? Play that. Play that tune. What is that? The first tune I played? Play? First tune you ever learned. And that's from a French song? Well, it's the first tune. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got Joe going. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's a great tune, though. Um, let's play the little Judy. The reason a lot of us can play the same stuff is that we all listen to early recordings. Uh, the mo one of the most influential was Winston Scotty Fitzgerald, and he put all of these tunes on. And Jerry learns from those records. I learned from them. You, you sat at yeah. his, at his. So, uh, but this is one that he put on an early recording on the Celtic label or out of, out of uh, rodeo label or one of those out of uh, Cape Breton.
Jerry plays great waltzes, which he will now do. <laughs> Jerry's a waltz king. There's a, there's a contest tradition also that kind of skirts along with this music, and in all of these contests, you're required to play a waltz, a reel, and a jig, or a waltz and a reel and a tune of your choice, something that gives them three different uh, tempos. In the Scottish tradition, it's more they play an air or a, a strasse or a march and a, and a reel and a jig. If you do uh, get a chance to go to any of the clubs where these guys play, uh, it's very much like you might find it if you went to, to New Brunswick, to Nova Scotia. Um, the only thing different are the license plates on the cars out front. Yeah, it's usually about three or four dollars to get in. And, um, there's a bar at one end, and the nice one of the things they do at the Canadian club is uh, about midnight or so after everyone's had their sets, they they have tea. Bring out cookies and sandwiches and pots of tea. An old recording of uh, French Canadian uh, up around uh, Sherbrooke.
out of the 30s, and they're very square. They're very uh, angular tunes. I, I like them a lot, and that's what I think of Tommy playing these halls in the 30s and 40s, before and after the war. Those were the kind of tunes that people just got up and danced to all over the place. Nothing too fancy, but uh, a lot of fun. Shall we finish off with something here? Good Andrew? That's a great one. Yeah. <laughs> I get a chance to play with them. I learn something new, and I, I hope you've been inspired to maybe talk to them about ways they could help you out in some of your projects as well. Thanks again.